her friends were murdered. He never should have been stolen. <laughs> And that was the uh, the opening, uh, the, f- the first ever opening music for The History Continues, the first ever show we did back in 2011. And in advance, uh, just to apologise for sound quality, we have got better over the years, as you've probably heard. So do stick around. Things will get better, or maybe they'll get worse. But uh, yes, this is an extra special bonus episode of The Hysteria Continues. I'm flying solo, as it were, and I'll be your host for uh, the next hour or so of the best and the worst and the probably the drunkest moments of The Hysteria Continues. So buckle up, it's going to be a bumpy ride. But let's go back to 2011 and hear how innocent and sweet we all sounded, well, apart from Nathan, hadn't joined by that point. Uh, And this is our very first episode on Happy Birthday to Me. Well, welcome to The Hysteria Continues. Um, It's a new podcast from uh, the creators of Hysteria Lives. That's me, Justin. And The Body Count Continues, which is Joseph. Uh, Hello, Joseph. Uh, That's me. Hi, Joseph. And we're also joined by Eric, who's one of our one of my number one reviewers. Hi, Eric. Hello. 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 Um, and we're going to be doing the same jokes, I think, that we've already rehearsed, which is basically this is the international uh, United Nations of Slasherdom, because I'm in in Bristol in uh, in England. Um, and Eric, where are you? I'm in Dublin in the Republic of Ireland. And Joseph, where are you? I am in the States, uh, Tennessee, to be precise. And it wasn't until the, uh, the third show when we covered uh, April Fool's Day that we were joined by Nathan Johnson. Uh, and so, well, here's uh, Nathan's opening. Um, first of all, let's have a little chat to, to Nathan. Um, Nathan, we talked about the last couple of weeks a little bit why we got into Slash movies. So can you just give a little kind of, um, you know, pot review about, you know, why you have a love for the subgenre? No, it's hard to remember because I've been watching these movies since I was three or four years old. And I first remember seeing The Slumber Party Massacre and Alice Sweet Alice, and I was hooked. I watched that Alice Sweet Alice tape until it broke. So, I mean, I've just been into them for as long as I can remember. Yeah, well, no, fantastic. I think it's kind of, um, it's a love that dare not speak its name for a lot of us. Um, But now we're all coming out and out and proud as slasher movie fans. Um, and I think hopefully we've got more people listening to us now than we have actually joining us today. I think it's fair to say that our early shows were plagued with some uh, sound issues, as you can probably already hear. Uh, Skype um, and the Skype gods were not always kind to us, but sometimes they uh, gave us uh, unintentional hilarity, as, uh, as some of these clips will show coming up now. Welcome back to The History Continues, episode 72, and this is Skype, the final chapter, um, which it might well be the final chapter for Skype if it, uh, if it carries on being such a bastard. But, 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 and you probably just heard that little remix there. We're going to see how we go. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be one of those shows. Funnily enough, mm-hmm. we've just done, we just recorded our Christmas quiz before this and had no problems at all. But suddenly it's, but anyway, what can you do? But we're back at Crystal Lake um, and I'm here with We're my... actually looking into other options to yes. record. So if, if, the, if it does, if it pulls an episode like, I don't remember which one it was that had the really bad one. I think it was Crinoline Head. Mm. If it's yes. that bad, then we'll 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 try the new thing. So. Yep, there we go. Another little Skype thing. <laughs> there was somebody. <laughs> somebody. Hmm? Uh, 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 I'm doing very good. I am the FA Cup of fornication. That's the um. That's the English equivalent of being the Super Bowl of self abuse. Is it? Right. Yep. Very polished. But literally. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> And uh, Joseph, how are you doing? God, I'm horny. <laughs> well, tell us no something. We don't That's what Crispin Glover says in yes. Friday the Thirteen Part Four. Mm, indeed, he does. But um, well, hopefully, we won't be hearing too much groaning come from from your end. Say I'm not actually, so you're, you're safe. Okay, all right. Um, Nathan, how about you? Are you horny? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay, right. Okay. <laughs> I said that very quickly because I'm like, uh, it might skip. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, we're going to see how we go. But we've also got um, this episode, we're obviously covering um, Friday 13th, the final chapter, in inverted commas. Um, Eric's got an epic Friday 13th quiz for us, haven't you, Eric? 
Oh, I do. Oh, oh is that stripes? Like back, then. Is that stripes? That is, that is, that is, that is, that is stripes. Yes. <laughs> oh, this she is says Merry such Christmas. a fun show. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. We got we got the cats. We've got the Skype remix. It's going to be one of those shows. You know, uh, to paraphrase totally, yeah. paraphrase Betty hold Davis. On to your hold side. on, it's going to be a bumpy night. So, yeah. um, like angelic and anxious. <laughs> <laughs> My God, did you hear that Skype remix? Yeah, that was kind of crazy. crazy. Yeah. Hmm? That was. We have to leave that in, Joseph. What yeah. happens? What happens? Oliver, Oliver was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. It was Eric's. Oh, Eric's, awesome. Eric's laugh. Yeah, you had a Skype, laugh. Skype remix. You sounded across between um, dastardly and dastardly and muttly and uh, God knows something from another dimension. Oh, cool. Remember. Have you all know that I look so good, that have looked at, have looked at, have been good as a crime, I'd be on death row. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Eric, it's the taking part that counts. Whatever. <laughs> right. I, I'm, the, uh, I'm the professional in the quizzes. I never, you know, have a meltdown. So when we actually stop recording the episode, I'm going to rub this in Eric's face on Facebook. I was about to say, of course you never melt down. You won yeah, this one. Because... Well, even when I lose, I, I'm always civil about it. Yeah, well, so yeah. am I. I have a suspicion that all the answers were given to you at Grant Grant's the other night. Uh, 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 uh. Well, he like, wouldn't know them. Here, Nathan, give me the answers and I'll give you some of my ice cream. I didn't have ice cream that night. I had a cookie. Ever. <laughs> right. Well, um, thank you, Nathan, for another very interesting... Ah, yes. The infamous uh, Hysteria Continues uh, quizzes, which have led to many a tantrum and, of course, the birth of Inga. Eric, what yes. is Mrs. Voorhees' first name? Pamela. Oh, I'm afraid that's incorrect. Oh, that's it trick is question. Pamela Voorhees. No, trick question, wasn't it? Hmm. No, it's not Pamela. No. Mrs. Uh, Voorhees. Justin? Sorry? <laughs> Do you know the answer? I don't, but I know it's not Pamela. It is on the gravestone of the final chapter. It's Pamela it. Voorhees. Uh, Joseph? Her, actually, her name really is Veronica. Mm. <gasps> Correct. What? Where is it revealed that? Why That's does right. the gravestone say Pamela no. Voorhees in final chapter? No, go back and why watch does her, the first Friday. Why does her gravestone say Pamela Voorhees in the final chapter? <laughs> so you got to go back and watch the first <laughs> Friday the 13th movie. In the middle, the clue is right there. Yes. What? You see it in her, never... in her coat when she hangs it up. When she comes in, before she starts this, fighting with Adrian this, King, she takes her I coat off. And there's a... I know what's going on. I know what's going on here. There's behind, behind the scenes stuff going on here, isn't there? Well, I the will just say we were pulling your leg, Eric. You get a point because it is Pamela. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the Inga, Inga train rolling early. Yes, that was um, oh, very naughty, Nathan. So going into round two, Amanda has zero, Eric has one, <laughs> Justin has one, and Nathan has one. You can just write zero down on mine and leave it. I'm pretty sure that's where I'm going to stay. Okay. okay. Round two, we'll start with Eric. And this round is fill in the tag line and name the movie, basically. Uh-huh. I'm, going to give you the fir- I'm going to give you the first and last word of the tagline, and you have to fill in the rest, of the middle portion of the tagline and name what movie it came from. Good Lord. <laughs> so, Eric, door number one, two, three, or four. Four. Okay. The first the first word is you've, and the last word is Christmas. You've. I have no bloody idea. You've just done a big poo on Christmas, and it's from <laughs> it's from the film Poo Christmas. <laughs> Surprisingly, enough, that is correct. <laughs> okay, uh, Justin, do you know it? Oh, you've, you've, um, uh, I was trying to think what, um, it's not Black Christmas, um, I, 
I don't know. It's, I'm going to pass it. I'll, I'll say the film's Christmas Evil, but I, I don't know what the tagline is. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Nathan? You've been bad at Christmas uh, <laughs> from Silent Night, Deadly Night. <laughs> no, that is incorrect. Amanda? <laughs> um, you've... I don't know. You've been killed on Christmas. Christmas Kill, 1978. No, I'm sorry. The answer is <laughs> you've, you've made it through Halloween. Now try and survive Christmas, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, well, I got the movie right. Well, Nathan got the movie right, so I'm going to give him half a point. That's not fair! <laughs> I, I would have guessed... you, you, you would have said half a... You would have got half I a point. I would have guessed a proper movie if I'd known that you could have got a po- half a point for a proper movie. Wait, title. are you telling me Pooh Christmas doesn't exist? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Eric. Part. I'm just kidding, Eric. I'm not giving him half a point. I just wanted to hear you. I just wanted to hear you go crazy. <clears throat> All right. So Eric picked door number four. We're going with Justin now. Door number one, two, or three. Uh, have we got anything else we want to say about Bloody Moon before we um, before the Bloody Moon is up at this rate? Just wondering which one of us would be the Antonio. I think it would be me personally. I think it's probably... no. He's not a bear. He's not bear enough. No, but everyone loves me. Do you know? They? No? no, we hate you. Okay, who'd be who'd be the Inga then, Justin? You're Maybe the Inga. Justin. Me, Eric's the Inga. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yes. definitely the Inga. It's horrible. Why? So, I'm so harsh. <laughs> I don't have those mood swings. <laughs> I do bounce up in my bed trying to make people think I'm I'm scoring, <laughs> but otherwise, there's no connection. <laughs> you sure? Well, well. Oh, oh, Eric. But yeah, no, it's do an interesting ra- point. Yeah. Mm. Do raccoons really steal makeup? I don't know. She, the the woman who stole the makeup wasn't very good at putting it on, was it? She looked like Toya. no. She looked like she she was shot by Homer Simpson's makeup gun. Yeah, mm. like Toya. Um, Shut at you. <laughs> um, if you push me too far, I'm going to throw myself out the window. Oh, yeah. Toya looks like a clown whore. Okay, jump, I'm going jump. to throw myself out the window now. I'm going jump, over to jump, the window. Jump. I'm go- You're not trying to stop me. You're not trying to stop me, Justin. I'm going. Are to you on the first floor? Out. Are you on the ground floor? No, I'm on the fourth floor. You're on the fourth no. floor? Okay. Yeah, I'm just open. No, the door now. Eric, don't. To... Stop. I'm going to do it. You're not to stop me. Eric, just we can't. Stop. To stop me. Okay. No, um, anyway, what were you talking about? You're not about? to stop um, me. <laughs> Eric, this will come. This is a cry for help. Eric, don't jump. I hate you. <laughs> do it. No, I wasn't it. Anyway, <gasps> Eric. Just think about your fans. Yeah, I know. Millions of them out there. Yeah, they'd be very upset if you threw, if you tossed yourself off. So, um, <laughs> well, you've got, you, you've got your love Ooh. beads, haven't you? You've got anal love beads to keep you company, so that's always good. Um, How dare you? What? Mm. How dare mm. you? What's Eric just sent yes. a rude message to you? No. No, no, I said, how dare you, because you mentioned anal beads. That, this is a family podcast. <laughs> it's hardly. Well, it's, um, it's like a, the Manson family, maybe. But, um, yeah. And sure. Justin, the photo shoot in the graveyard, did that take you back to your teenage years? Yes, it did. It did. Yeah, it I thought was, so. Yeah. Yeah. Although, um, yeah, I, to be honest, there was uh, well, not, not enough black. There, really. What do you want? Why did you come here? Why? Just to visit you, Daniela. But since poor Fabian's death, I lost all sense. <laughs> Fabian. You liked Fabian, didn't you? Sure you did. You liked making love with him. Daniela, what on earth are you saying? Well, I saw you making love with Fabian. You were obscene. Disgusting. But you liked it. I like to make love, too, you know. I wanted to make it with Fabian, not that other one. But you're the one who makes it with Fabian. I hate you! I hate you! You whore! You whore! Go fuck yourself! You dirty bitch! You! Get away from me, you hear? You whore! Oh, I don't want her to say it! Get out of here! I don't want her to say it! You're not going to me a Eric. Yeah. <laughs> that, again, one of Toya's finest roles. 
I was going to say it was Joseph on a Saturday night, <laughs> but um, that is from a 1976 Euro Euro horror film called Werewolf Woman, sometimes known as Naked Werewolf Woman. Um, it stars Anik Burrell as Daniela, who's that woman you just heard, and she's afflicted with a mild case of lycanthropy, um, which means basically she's a bit loopy and swears a lot. Um, and she acts like a spoiled brat, which is, uh, you know, characteristics I love in my Euro horror films. Um, uh, and you can, as you can hear from that clip, she's just jealous that, about the fact that she can't make love to her brother-in-law, Fabian. Of course, Inga's not the only diva on the show. Anyone else seen that? Or no, 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 no. Well, fair enough. I, I've um, well, thank you, Nathan. I've uh, been catching up again or revisiting. I wasn't finished. Oh, you were not finished. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Justin's in the bad books. Now. Just that you didn't ask me if I saw anything else. You I'm always sorry. do. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, because I was excited to talk about this one. Apologise for his rudeness, Nathan. Yeah, oh, I know. I don't really. Um, Crazy robot lady, all up in that alley property. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Somebody help it. Property, property. He also has a tender side. Uh, as many of you might remember if you listened to the Sleepaway Camp 2 episode where he expressed concern about the friends and families of those poor victims. And then the counsellor's like, Angela, what's really in there? And she goes, dead teenagers' brains. Um, so obviously the movie has a sense of humour. It is no way meant to be taken seriously at all. As a matter of fact, I think it kind of works for me more as a comedy than a horror movie. I don't find it to be scary at all in, in the slightest. But I do find it to be a lot of fun and uh, a funny. And you guys know that this is the movie that made me very emotional at one point because I was thinking about the families of these people that Angela was killing. And I was like... You know, they, they actually have families that care about them. And it's kind of sad that the families are going to have to find out that their kid died at this camp. So, I mean, that's not, I mean, I, I, I think that, like, like Demi, the character of Demi, she didn't really do anything wrong. She just found out too much. So, Angela killed her more out of self preservation. Same goes with Leah, the, the tattletale girl, because she's like, but what did I do? I didn't do anything. And Angela's just like, well, you're going to tell. So she had to die, too. Um, but I'm a huge fan, huge fan. I love that they're all named after the Brat Pack. Um, just another tongue-in-cheek moment in the film. And, of course, Joseph is quite literally the straight man of the podcast. And his no-nonsense reviews of uh, slash movies have become a firm favourite. And here he is dissecting Rob Zombie's first Halloween. Well, I was researching uh, Mr. Cummings. That's Rob Cummings, uh, Rob Zombie. And he seems like a very good guy. You know, he's a vegan. He, he abhors violence. He's, you know, all for equality. And he has a genuine love of horror films. Um, I've seen him in some interviews where he, he kind of has this almost this insecure, standoffish nature about him where he, he, he folds his arms over his chest and he, he kind of shies away from being asked questions. And he's, he, he almost seems like a child, um, a likable, kind of funny child. And so it pains me to say, you know, to talk bad about someone someone who seems like a genuinely good person. Um, it pains me to say that his movie is complete and utter horseshit. I hate this movie so much. I, I just watched it before the show and this is the first time I'd seen it since it was released in uh, theaters back in 2007. And it is just abhorrent. It, it's, it's, I, I don't even have the words to describe it. Like the, the opening hour where we get to know Michael. Um, I think what Rob Zombie is trying to do here is, um, well, for starters, I like the idea that, you know, Michael just goes on a, you know, he just kills his, uh, sister for no reason whatsoever. I think that is scary. I think, uh, the, you know, not knowing why someone did something they did is just infinitely more terrifying than what is essentially, uh, just the story of Michael becoming another statistic. I mean, I think, I think that is just sad. I think, I, I think there's no, you know, there's no popcorn joy in this, in this, there's no, there's nothing scary about it. It's just sad. It's, it's just another kid who was abused and there's no joy in it. And the, the, the full hour leading up to Michael killing, it's a lot of, like Eric said, it's a lot of screaming. 
amazing. Um, in the director's cut, there is a, a, a vile, disgusting, just absolutely repugnant rape scene that has no business being in this film um, or in any film, really. I mean, it's just it's not fun whatsoever. And I'm not saying, hey, you know, people shouldn't include stuff like this. You know, I think, you know, as artists should be able to do whatever they want, you know, more power to you. But it's just not fun. I, I had no joy watching this. You know, when they finally get to the, the, the suburb portion and they kind of remake Halloween, essentially, even the even the the, the, the middle class portion of the film feels kind of carnival sideshowy and white trashy. And it's just it's so grating. And I, I uh, this movie is just it makes my skin crawl just thinking about it. I hate it so much. The shaky cam, the screaming, the cursing. Um, there's no likable characters. And for me, you know, I could forgive the shaky cam. I could forgive the over the top violence if there were just one character that I could root for. And I could not root for a single person in this film. It all boils down to characters for me. And I did not like a single character in this movie. Ergo, I did not like this movie. And I would rather not talk about this movie ever again um, <laughs> or anything of Rob Zombie's films. I mean, the guy's a nice guy. I, you know, more power to him to make as many movies as he wants. Wants. Make as uh, many 31s or Halloween 2s as he likes. You know, go off and do whatever you want, Rob. But um, I think after we cover this and we cover Halloween 2 next year, I'm done. Um, I, I, I have no interest in anything you're going to do. Uh, no offense to you, Guy, but boy, this was an endurance test. Over the last 10 years, we've been lucky enough to speak to many of the actors, actresses and directors that have appeared in the classic slasher movies in the 1970s and 1980s. Uh, and coming up, uh, some clips from our favourite moments those interviews, starting off with the lovely Leslie Donaldson, who of course was in Happy Birthday to Me and Funeral Home and Curtains. So here's Leslie. Were you ever approached for like uh, any other... Uh, subgenre films, any other slasher films back in the early 80s? Uh, actually, I auditioned for, um, uh, oh, I think it was Humongous. Wow, really? Yeah, which was, I, I believe, I want to say it was Bill Fruitt as well who did that, but um, I could be wrong. It was Paul uh, Lynch. Paul Lynch, yes, it was Paul Lynch. I, I remember that. I mean, my, you have to rem you remember, this is like 30 years ago, so... Um, the who's who's and the what what's are kind of a fuzzy, but um, yeah, no, I, I do remember auditioning for that, and um, I think there was another Bill Fruitt film that I was asked to audition for, but I can't remember what it was. Um, and also, actually, I was up for the part of Mary Lou in uh, the Prom Nights um, sequel, the part of Mary Lou. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was kind of exciting, but it went to um, uh, um, Lisa Schrag who played that part, and and well, I might add, so she was great. <laughs> As a, fo a follow up to that that uh, question, Leslie, there's yeah. a, there's a picture on the back of the UK video box which shows oh. um, the killer on stage with all of the other actresses surrounding yes, I hear her. About that. <laughs> Sorry. Carry on, sorry. No, do you, do you remember filming? Was that was that no. shock? So it wasn't in the film. No, <laughs> I don't remember filming that. Oh, okay. I really don't. Um, yeah, apparently, this is a scene in the movie, or it was a scene in the movie, or it was you know a, a photo in the movie. And I, I actually, to, to be honest with you, I have no memory because that's sort of the the same kind of scenario as what happened in, in Happy Birthday to Me. Mm. The, all the all the dead people were around the table, and there's Virginia, and she comes out with, and I remember that distinctly filming that, but I have no memory of filming uh you know being put on a stage and and you know as a dead dead character and and being filmed uh you know in in that sequence so i have no idea what that is i mean it might because it's, it's a very small picture so you can't really tell so it might not have actually been the real actresses there they may have no, bought, it probably wasn't it definitely wasn't because i don't remember being a part of it so yeah bizarre <laughs> Um, yeah, just say after Jamie Lee Curtis's role in Halloween, um, a lot of these films followed on, and it was almost sort of de rigueur to have a final girl in slasher movies and horror movies. Um, yeah. Did you enjoy playing that role? And looking back on it now, how do you sort of look back? Do you look back with fondness to those roles from the early 80s? Uh, you mean for like a funeral home or. Well, funeral or, home, all, yeah. all of the films you did around that yeah. time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when, when, at that time, that's what they were making in Canada. They were making comedies like Meatballs and Porkies and 
those type of films. And then they were making the, the horror films like Prom Night and, you know, Funeral Home and My Bloody Valentine and all those stuff, all that kind of stuff. And, and so, you know, for me, it was, just, it was work. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. I was working with my peers and, um, you know, I was learning my craft and, you know, if you told me back then that they were going to have an enduring audience, I would have been like, are you serious? Really? Forget it. No, I, I would, I would have, I would have laughed in your face. Um, but yeah, no, they were, they were an amazing, uh, it was amazing time. It was an amazing experience. And, um, yeah, I have a lot of fond memories of, of, of doing those films. Even, you know, the, the curtains type saga, which went on forever. <laughs> it's like the filming went on forever, so. Hi, I'm Spice Williams Crosby from Fatal Games, and you are listening to Hysteria Continues. I kind of got the impression that it was a little bit of a troubled production because it had quite a strange heritage, didn't it? Because the, if I'm right in thinking, the, the person, um, I think, who wrote it, or there was um, uh, Raphael Brunel, who was the son of Louis Brunel, who's the father of surrealism, which is quite a strange thing. And there's Christopher Mac- M- Mankiewicz, who played the coach, who was the son of the director of All About Eve and the classic Hollywood films. So... Uh, it was kind of not and necessarily... And there was a, a producer, his name was Michael... Um... Michael Elliott, was that the... Yes, yes. Michael Elliott. Yeah. Yeah. Was... Um, it was a troubled production. Mm. Um, it seemed like their first time all together, they weren't okay. all... Um, they, they weren't a tight-running ship. Mm. So, um, you know, it was a troubled production, and I never saw any of them after that whatsoever. Okay. So... Because it's one of those films that hasn't... It's Because what I love about looking back at some of those um, probably forgotten films, because I think Fatal Games, you probably don't... Do you get asked about it at all? Is it a film that people ask you about? Very rarely, but it had another name. It was, um, it was Killing Touch, wasn't it? It was the Killing, killing Touch. Killing Touch. <laughs> yeah. It was called the Killing Touch. So I remember one time somebody did ask me, you know, hmm. about Fatal Games, and I was like, oh, I don't think I ever worked in that. Okay. And they said, yeah, you worked in it. And I said, no. And they said, they told me the story. And I said, mm. yeah, I, but it was called The Killing Touch. And they go, no, no, no. They changed the name to Fatal Games. Mm. So um, I didn't know about it. Because <laughs> do, do you know, because um, it actually came out in the UK as The Killing Touch, but I don't think it got released at the cinema. Do you remember it? Did you get to see it at the cinema? I just you... saw it because I remember that after um, after I finished working on it, there was a bunch of other shows that I was working on. I started mm-hmm. guest starring on a bunch of TV shows. I had a TV series called uh, Women in Prison, mm-hmm. Fox's first uh, sitcom. There was Mama's Families, My Two Dads. There were just a, a lot of mo- a lot of TV shows, one right after another, that I started working on. So you know, in, in when you go do an independent film, you kind of do it. They wrap it up. They show the they show it mm. for a screening, and then you move on, you know? Mm. I, I very rarely ever see any show. Hi, this is Russell Todd from Chopping Mall. He knows you're alone in Friday the 13th Part 2, and you're listening to The Hysteria Continues. Like, top 10 in 1984 included songs by Prince, Let's Go Crazy, Stevie Wonder, I Just Called to Say I Love You, and Wham's Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. So does that wow, what reach Jake f- any memories? <laughs> <laughs> it's a flashback. Yeah. You weren't dancing around to them on the set of Chopping Mall, were you? Oh, I don't even remember what was what was playing. <laughs> Such a long time ago. But. What do you remember anything about your co-stars? Uh, I'm thinking of Kelly Maroney, Barbara Crampton, Tony O'Dell, and your on-screen love interest, uh, Carrie Emerson. What what I remember, we were all having a great time. Mm. That's what I remember the most. We were all very young. And, and doing this movie full of adventure and action and, you know, here I'm carrying an AK-47 around in a gun and, and blowing up this mall, which was literally down the street from my home. And um, it was just a blast. We'd come into the mall after it closed and we'd work till, you know, early in the morning. And, um, and we had the chance to, you know, they would put up plate glass doors to replace the real ones and I could throw a crowbar through it and robots chasing us and... It was my first real action picture, and uh, it was a hoot. We were all laughing constantly, 
and and we all felt real, really blessed to be doing this movie, and uh, it's kind of fun to watch today and and reminisce about those days, and uh, I guess being young and 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 uh, having this opportunity to to go wild inside a mall. Mm. Uh, speaking of your robotic co-stars, did they um, cause any problems on set? I mean, you hear the famous stories of Jaws, where the mechanical shark would constantly break down and cause delays. Was that the experience you had with the uh, robots on Chopping Mall? I do remember a few times the, the robots breaking down or not being properly controlled. I think they were you know, remotely controlled. Um, but I think most of the time things went fine. Um, I don't know if you've heard from the other people in the cast of any other different stories, but... Uh, I don't recall much in the way of uh, technical malfunctions. Hello, this is Caitlin O'Haney, the final girl from He Knows You're Alone, and you're listening to Hysteria Continue, because um, you have to do a certain amount of work uh, before you can get into the union. Mm. And I've done a really, really rather bad uh, horror movie uh, right before that, called Savage Weekend, which is not very well done at all. Um, very, very no money at all. Mm. And uh, I did another movie. So, and it was good people, though. It was very good people. I mean, Edgar Lansbury and Joe Peru produced it. And, and I liked Armand, you know, when I met him. And Don Scardino uh, was a, was an up-and-coming actor at the time. And I was just starting out, so I was thrilled when Armand offered me the part. And actually filming it was a tremendous amount of fun. Now, we didn't have any money, so we were... We, Armand was very lucky. Well, he actually, I guess, he was very smart in that he cast um, such wonderful actors. Uh, I, was, I was really pleased to work with everybody, because everybody was so wonderful, and uh, we all were just starting out. But most of the takes that you see in that movie are first takes. Mm. I mean, <laughs> because there was no money. <laughs> well, you said, it, that Armand said, he said it was a, it took about 15 days to shoot, so it was very, right. it, was al it was almost like a guerrilla film, very quick and dirty, and just very, very, you know, so... I imagine that must have been quite a lot of fun because you did those quite a lot of stunts, wasn't there, towards the end of the film when you're being chased by Tom Rolfing, the killer, around the morgue and also the driving. Did you do the driving yourself? I don't remember that. No, I don't, I don't believe I did any... I don't, I don't think I did. I don't, I, I don't think I did. The scene where he grabs me through mm. the door, mm. you know, and, and I stab his arm... Mm. One take. <laughs> wow, really? That was um, that was quite impressive, wasn't it? That's what I'm saying. Most of those scenes were the first take. Hi, this is Adrian King, Alice from Friday the Thirteenth, and the hysteria continues. Absolutely delighted to have one of the original final girls, Adrian King, Alice from Friday Thirteenth, with us. Um, she is a legend, and we're absolutely delighted to have her on the show. So thank you for joining us, Adrienne. How are you doing? My pleasure. I'm doing very, very well. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, very good, very good. Very excited to be speaking to you. So um, I was, I was, we talked about Friday the 13th. Um, I was um, about 11 when it came out, and um, I've told this story before, but the, it was one of the topics at the schoolyard when I was a kid, when I was about an 11-year-old kid, and everyone said they'd seen it when it came out on video. And um, obviously I was too young to see at cinema, but a girl told me it was a story about um, accidents happening on Friday the 13th um, and strange things happening, like people driving along the freeway and their car filling up with water and drowning, all these kind of things. And of course it was completely yeah. made up, it wasn't that at all, but I remember <laughs> seeing it on video probably a year or so later and loving it, and I sort of fell in love with Friday the 13th um, and the slasher movies and ever since then. So it's actually one of my formative moments, so um, I'm absolutely delighted to be talking to you, Adrienne. And um, we're going to be talking bringing all my goodies, including um, the the original notes from that night on the beach, mm. um, that fight scene. Yeah. I have Sean Cunningham's original 13 notes. Wow. 13 notes that <laughs> he had scribbled on two pages of steno 
coffee stains. And when the sun was coming up and we'd shot all night long, and when I tell you, both of us were battered and bruised and a little bloody, Sean took those two pieces of paper, which had notes that say Tom Savini this, Betsy this, Adrian this, and crumpled them and threw them away with the Polaroids, you know, from, well, being an artist, Justin, yes, I went in there, got them, <laughs> put them in my jeans pocket, which I totally forgot about, but because I'm thinking collage, if the movie never opens, I'll make a collage, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, because at that time, with a little low budget, you don't know if you're even going to finish it, mm. and so I found these notes, and I made a poster, and I'm bringing those posters over, too. I've had a little bit of fun doing some cameos recently, but I would say um, part two kind of was just, we'll see what happens to answer your question. And I think we saw what happens, you know. Okay, Eric did ask me to ask you if that was a real cat thrown through the window, if you remember. Oh, God, yes. It was all real. It was all absolutely, everything was real back then. Even the ice pick through my face Mm. Um, it was supposed to be retractable, but this, uh, the this props man forgot to check, and so when they actually did the first one, it did not retract. So even the Ouch. ice pick was real. Yeah, I had a little hole they had to aim for for the second take. Oh, wow. Well, that could have been that could have been horrible. Would have been a very messy. Yes. End that could have been the real demise it? of Alice. <laughs> yes, that would have been a real demise of Alice. And it, I'm right. Of course, on the hysteria continues. We've been uh, famed for our dedication to uh, finding every nook and cranny of the Slash movie. And, of course, a special shout-out to our very own Nathan Johnson. Hey, well, Nathan, how about you? Um, well, David Copperfield is actually a real magician. That's not just for the movie. Right. And um, that's all I got. Are uh, you guys ready for background information? Mm. Yeah, that mm-hmm. sounds good. Yes. Okay, I don't have any, so you guys go ahead. <laughs> Nathan, what have you got for us? No. No. (laughs) Okay. We love you really, Nathan. Um, Of course, we've also had some uh, lots of interesting background. If you go back through the old episodes, uh, you'll find uh, lots there. But also um, a couple of standout moments uh, for us. Uh, I think one was uh, Joseph uh, recalling meeting Derek McKinnon, uh, Kenny from Terror Train at uh, our convention uh, with Nathan. And also my uh, the infamous deleted interview uh, with uh, Joanna Morales, who played Selena in Movie House Massacre. First um, order of background is um, answering that question about which of us on the show um, almost That's was sedu- seduced, but potentially seduced by somebody from Terror Train. So who wants to uh, step up to the mic? Well, Eric, uh, did you end up sleeping with him? I did not end up sleeping with um, Kenny Hampson from Terror Oh, okay. Actually, it was me. Um, Nathan and I went to Monster Mania in 2010. We met uh, Derek McKinnon, who was really nice, by the way. Um, Talked to him for a few minutes, and uh, Nathan can back me up on this because he was there. Um, He kept winking at me, and like he would kind of grab my hand, and he gave me his room number and told me to meet him in his room. I don't know if he was drunk or if he if he was really attracted to me, but it was kind of a unique little uh, celebrity meeting there. Is all I'll Maybe say. he just had a flirty personality. He could have, I don't know, but he just he he had the eyes for me. I guess it's kind of flattering <laughs> in a, in a way. Well, well yes, I, I think kind of um, uh, flirting. It, once you so give someone your room number, it goes beyond flirting. Really. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe what was fun, what was funny is because I remember that night um, when he gave me the room number, I'm like, uh oh, that's like six rooms down from where I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he just needed some new towels. Yeah, he could have. <laughs> I look, I kind of looked like a, a hotel porter that night. So. <laughs> uh, looked like a hoe, more like. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Eric, but uh, it'll happen as like a mini soda or something. We'll see. Well, he, well, he won't if he listens back to this episode. And, <laughs> yeah. and well, here's, you. Here's you saying, should have gone to his room. Well, I'm not saying I'm not saying anything bad. I'm actually flattered that he was, you know, hitting on me. I mean, I don't swing that way, but it was very flattering that you know a big slasher movie star was batting his eyes at me. And oh, Derek, you were handsome that night. <laughs> I was dressed? dissed twice that weekend. You well, first in that case because I was 
getting the autograph first. And he was just like, you know, I mean, he was nice to me, but he was all about Joseph. So, you know, I mean, I was dissed then. And then later, <laughs> later was worse because that night we were all drinking at the bar and uh, we were some with some friends of ours. And one of the guys, I guess he saw another guy and he thought that he was really attractive and he made some comments about it. Well, one of the girls just kind of, heard like the tail end of it and I was standing next to him and she was like, Oh, are you talking about him? Like pointing at me about this guy he thought was so attractive. He's like, Oh no, not him. This guy. <laughs> I was like, gee, thanks. I appreciate it. Well, the, the only thing I've got was well, just to say, because it was the, um, a little bit of a background. Some of you, if you've used to, or have watched, um, um, sorry, or read even, uh, hysteria lives over the years. Um, there's a lost, interview on there and the interview is with uh, Joanna Morales who played Selena in the film and it's probably <clears throat> hands down the most entertaining interview I've ever ha- ever had um, it was probably the funniest interview ever now for personal reasons Joanna asked me to remove it um, this is going back many many years ago well many years ago about maybe seven or eight years ago um, so I've no idea um, what she thinks about it now now obviously <clears throat> as you heard from the interview with Rick um, Rick and Joanna don't exactly see eye to eye, although I think with that interview, Rick was holding <coughs> excuse me, a, um, a bit of knowledge branch out for Joanna. So if you are listening, Joanna, we are big fans. Um, so obviously I'm not going to put the interview back up, but um, there's a couple of things that um, she said in it was, were quite um, funny, so I'm just going to read a couple of uh, little bits out. Um, I said, did you have fun being Selena? And she said, I've got some bad news. I've always been and still am a Selena. If you'd like to visit someone with a constant bad attitude, foul mouth and general sense of causing trouble, all in the sense of good laugh, it's me. Um, and she says she just can't get, get it up to look at slutty, so slutty at um, her age or star herself to a size one. Um, and um, I asked her whose idea those gold spandex pants were and she said, those fucking gold spandex pants... I think that was my idea. Now, I bet you, if you go and ask Alice, um, fuck you, Rick, with all due respect, as you can see, no love lost there between the duo. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, or I mean he'll, would say it was his, her idea. I think my direct answer is, fuck if I remember. Possibly buying the spandex my, my way of not having to wear polyester. It's only a theory. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I'm just trying to find some stuff that isn't libelous. Um, yeah, that's uh, difficult. <laughs> I've read the full interview. I know that's difficult. <laughs> um, I, on the on the review I've got of Hysteria Lives, I used to have a picture of her with her boobs out, and she she searched for herself, and um, she saw her boobs. And uh, so she wrote to me. One of the things she did say, it was called... Um, the, the name that I think it was shot under was Revival House which is, is the reason she said she hadn't seen it for years and years. I actually sent her a copy of the movie because she didn't have um, the movie. And uh, um, when I actually um, sent it to her, that was, what did she say? Uh, she said, this is a different film than the one she saw. I remember I was actually grabbing my boobs and shaking them at people in that one. Also, I think it, this has been redubbed, me sounding a little less satanic. Um, that cheerleading scene is too funny. I do not recall doing that. I guess I did. Okay, I know I did. Um, she sort of says, also think that's me wearing my old Rocky Horror Magenta wig as the hooker with a back turned to being um, handcuffed. Ah, the good old days. And of course, our talents uh, go beyond uh, getting background for slasher movies. Um, some of us are very talented vocalists, uh, and there's be more coming up later. But uh, by popular request, uh, this is Eric's thoughts on The Terminator. Um, how about, should we listen to what Eric thought of the movie? Yes, yeah. we should. Um, and Eric has sent in this little sound clip from his Turkish prison. We smuggled out. Um, <laughs> somebody smuggled it somewhere unmentionable, and they got it to us. And this is Eric's thoughts on The Terminator. Yo, turn this dope jam up, you motherfucker. <gasps> Sorry I can't be there, but I'll see you later So here are my thoughts on The Terminator It starts out oh so very rude With Arnold Schwarzenegger and he's in the nude Not a horror film by any means Is it a slasher movie only in your dreams? I first saw this movie in the 1980s First impressions say it's not so great, eh? 
Somewhere killing people is lots of fun Shooting loads of Saracanas with a gun Lyndon Hamilton's acting is kind of fair But I like him most for her big 80s hair I saw this on the big screen not so long ago And the special effects, they made me shout out Whoa, they had an age well And they look kind of phony And the time travel plot was a load of baloney la, 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 la. I like James Cameron, I really do The Abyss and Aliens and those lies are true But something about the series is be kind of cold And I know that statement is kind of bold I've seen each installment and thought each was okay Even Edward Furlong and his floppy fringe so gay But for repeat viewings I have no intention Cause durations are too long to hold my attention la, 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 la. Crimes to a hope whenever we meet Reese. His lovey dovey stuff is pure cinema cheese. I want more robots and spaceship action and less about Sarah and her Reese attraction. You know what I'm saying, homo, uh, homies. Still man's well with a blistering pace Arnie's robot dude and he loses his face The chase in the factory is kind of ace But it's not as good as blood and black lace I mentioned that movie cause it gave me a rhyme Cause I'm writing this jam on limited time No chance for me to think about the cyborg destroyer Cause I'm too busy dancing around to Toya I fear this podcast veering off our course I see us Terminator, what next? Inspector Morse, I'm gonna have to kill you all with potato masher If you don't get back on track with the slasher So to sum up, here's my final view I don't think Terminator's a pile of poo But I hope that I will not be terminated When I admit to you all, I think it's overrated Word. Oh my goodness my goodness. I think he just won the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was amazing. We might as well just end the episode right now. And talking of singing now, a battle for the ages. It's good because I'm Harry, you know, like you like. No, well, I don't. You, you do like Harry, man. Yeah, but don't like bullies. He likes nice Harry, man. But uh, my <laughs> ultimate fantasy is to go to some convention with Justin and meet Susie. And Susie's all about me and she just wants to talk to me all the time. And Justin's left in the shadows. <laughs> that would be, be so brilliant. Well, you can go, um, Eric, to... Well, you can't do that, but you could go and meet um, Toya couldn't you did um did you see oh what? yeah here we go yeah yeah i think well, she's at the local flea market in dublin <laughs> well it's it just shows goes to show i'm not i'm not gonna say anything apart from the the facts which is that um this year <laughs> you've probably heard of the glastonbury festival you know it's a big deal and it sells out in two hours so what they're doing they're doing a new festival called i think it's called glasto budget and it's basically <laughs> it's a cheaper festival where they get the people who are playing the, they get the tribute bands to play the, the cheap version of the festival. So you go and watch the, the people who might be playing the, the official one. You get the tribute bands like, you know, the knockoff Rolling Stones or whatever. But Toya is headlining herself <laughs> at this knockoff tribute act festival. But as there isn't a tribute act to Toya, surprisingly. Because nobody, nobody can, because she's just too unique. She's, um, she's going to be uh, headlining knockoff Glasto. So there you go. You know, Justin, around, maybe around the sixth or seventh episode, you know, a long time ago, you, you made a reference that, you know, the whole Susie and Toya debate was finally, it was, it was coming to an end. We're up to 100 episodes now and it's still going. Would you yes. say now is the time to retire it or is it going to go on for another 100 episodes? Well, I'm, I'm quite happy to draw a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. No, you're but not. I, I'm happy you to love take taunting the, me. Taking the mature, the more mature. There's route. nothing mature about you <laughs> until the next episode, at least. <laughs> but who started it? I was talking about maturity. It's you. No, you always started the one that it. Everything you said your favourite, um, your fantasy was to humiliate me in front of Susie. 
well, that was just today. But I mean, the start of the whole thing overall in the global sense was you. <laughs> was it though? I don't think it was. I think um, from this track six from Kaleidoscope by Susie and the Banshees. Oh, did you? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Sort of saying, yeah. Uh, 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 Eric, you know when you're saying yeah, about you. people, um, the, the least <laughs> talented member of a band, well, obviously, it's vocals in Toys, band's case. <laughs> I hate you. What? I hate you. <laughs> Look, Eric, don't bring it to the table if you can't chow down. Ooh. Slasher movies got their own um, soundtrack LPs, didn't they? Released. I know, like The Burning got it released. Um, the final um, Exam did, surprisingly. Final exam. I wish this it. movie yeah. would have. Well, it may be somewhere in some bargain bin under a toy. Next to a toy. Yeah, I, 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 I knew that was coming. That was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? I don't like this episode. <laughs> Wait, this I thought you were episode. saying toy stuff is really catchy. That's not an insult. Am I lost? He said by it being so old wait, and wait. dated, it kind yeah, of is a kid. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Gosh. Well, Toya well, and, and uh, Susie are like the same age, so I don't know why the old... Toya, Toya is a year younger than Susie. Oh. Well, I mean, she looks a lot younger. Feel she like is. That. Yeah, she does. Well, Susie does, I know. Yeah. No, Toya well, does. If you pull off like that five <laughs> pounds of makeup on Susie's face, then who knows what you're going to find underneath. I'm just saying. Yes. I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking Medusa from Clash of the Titans. <laughs> I'm thinking Cthulhu. Yeah, but Susie, Susie hasn't had a facelift, unlike Toya, who's been stretched, um, you know, from here to Kingdom, oh boy. Kingdom Come, isn't she? Well, apparently she, talks, she, she talked about it, didn't she? Way. She had a facelift. Okay, I'm just going to go on to bullyingatwork.com and just register my complaints. Okay, well, while you're doing that, Eric, I'll play... Yeah. That's the lyrics to the song. It's Romeo, Romeo, head back out the window or something like that anyway. I just, oh, right. it, it okay, just, it's just pure trash. And I also thought, what song will annoy Justin the most? And I said, probably Romeo, mm. Romeo from Halloween 5. He'll probably hate that one. So Why would it annoy me? I don't know. I, just, I can imagine it's probably the epitome of 80s music that you, that you wouldn't like being a goth. I mean, if you played that next to, say, Spellbound by Susie and the Banshees, mm. it was probably the polar opposite. Well, it probably is, but I mean, I've heard a lot, lot worse. I mean, there's toys mm. back catalogue to start. Oh, go away! <laughs> oh, we're almost, we're almost over it now, aren't we, Eric? Yes, almost. And talking of jokes past their sell-by date. It's my joke of the week. It's so, so fantastic. Did you know that the film we were discussing today was originally going to star Rosie O'Donnell in the lead role? Back then, the working title was The Size of Laura's Arse. <laughs> but, but, but they'd done away with that idea early on. <laughs> done away. <laughs> oh, Eric. That was a good joke, Eric. That was great. I admit, that was great. Yes, a uh, double that joke. Might be, that might be my favorite one you've told so far. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 2016's off to a rollicking good start. It is. Oh, sorry, it's a bit premature. <laughs> yeah. It's my joke of the week. It's so, so fantastic. Okay, so the sequel to The Mutilator is going to be about a cannibal who likes to devour women while pretending he's a cat. You got all that? He's a cannibal who likes to devour women while pretending he's a cat. He's going to kidnap women and then he'll mew till he ate her. He'll mew till he... Don't go dissing on my joke because my humour is too sophisticated for you to comprehend, Justin. <laughs> you just didn't get the joke. <laughs> I'll, explain the, I'll explain the joke to you after, Justin. So I loved it, Eric. Eric, I thought it was Thank hilarious. The Thank best you. joke ever. Thank you, you and I hope your sides aren't too sore from laughing at that joke. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just recovering now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we do offer free therapy sessions after each podcast oh, to, okay. to our guests. I was, so. was going to ask about that. <laughs> it's so, also funny that Eric couldn't even possible. finish the joke before Justin threw yeah, it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's almost like you were prepared to hate on that joke. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mutilate, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin already knew in advance. Uh, <laughs> I thought you'd finished a joke. 
How do you finish that? <laughs> see, Justin, this is God. another example of you interrupting. Mm. Yeah. What's it, what's I can it? see why he's turning to rhubarb lady. <laughs> <laughs> you bring out the worst in people, Justin. Oh, dear. Oh. Again, uh, glimpsing behind the dirty curtain of the history continues. So, what do you call a woman with a huge arse who sings pop songs and goes around killing people with black gloves? J-Lo, J-Lo, J-Lo. You're welcome, everyone. What? J-Lo. Did you not understand the joke? I thought it was going to be a Susie kind of joke. It sounds like J-Lo. But that took me all night to come up with that one. And uh, thank you for listening to The Hysteria Continues. Um, we'll be back <laughs> next time. <laughs> oh, Eric. <laughs> Are you crying? Yeah. It's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eric. Well, what, what can we do to make you feel better? Well, why don't you read out what the listeners were saying about Tenebrae on our Facebook page? Okay. It might cheer me up. <laughs> Joseph, if you got that to hand. Yeah, just uh, let's see what everyone's saying here. That was our top three sci-fi horror mashups. Do you have a joke of the week, Eric? Not for sci-fi, no, because there's too many films. No, I don't have a joke. My joke of the week is so so yeah, yeah. Um, what did the spaceship say to the meteorite? What? Hi, I'm a spaceship. <laughs> <sighs> and over the last 10 years, we've been fortunate enough to record uh, dozens of commentaries for some of our favourite slasher movies for labels such as Arrow, uh, and vinegar syndrome and and an example of our insightful commentary here is a short clip from our commentary for 88 films release of nail gun massacre i know that terry lofton mentions uh in his interview that the whole sex scene was supposed to take place in the car but they were just too uncomfortable so they just got out of the car and decided to finish on the hood is that kind of like seagulling is that a word? That's grim. Have you not? You don't know what seagulling is? No, I don't. Oh, I don't know if to say it on, on this. On I'm this too country. fragile. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, you know what you know what dogging. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so, basically, apparently, seagulling is that you know people stand around and watch people having sex on yeah. car bonnets and in cars, yeah. and um, uh, seagulling is when people um, basically come in their hands and throw their come at the, the couple <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> okay. and, you, and, you, and, you, and you know this hmm. <laughs> well someone told me about it I've never I've obviously never been dogging but um, <laughs> someone told me about this well, I didn't know what it was but it's um, yeah, apparently uh, making seagull noises while they do it 88 no. films thanks for our one shot at commentary <laughs> 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 so well that's, it's nothing if not informative anyway but Come on, let's let's face it. We can't love, really lower the tone too much, can we? During I love the scene? that somebody's shaking the car. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're barely even moving in the car. Shaking. <laughs> you can actually see them in the back there. If you look, you can see someone back there shaking the car. And this is the guy that gets killed by one nail to the elbow. I oh, know. So it's my favorite death in the whole movie. And if you ever wondered where that cat flush in the toilet came from. Okay, well, um, we're on to our number twos. <laughs> so, Big I, number two. We're back, baby. We're back. <laughs> I don't have um, any uh, any sound clips for flushing toilets. I mean, I can look for one if you want one, but... Um, uh, no. A cat yeah, flushing a toilet. toilet. Sorry? Yeah. A cat flushing a toilet. A cat flushing a toilet. I'll have a look for that. I, can, I, can, take, I, I can take my phone and go flush my toilet real quick. <laughs> well, you could do if you want to get, get it. Um, well, there's a... Oh, what's this? It's um, it's a cat flushing toilet song. Let's oh. look at this. <laughs> Let's see what this is about. He's a cat flushing a toilet. 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 He's a cat flushing a toilet
So there you go. Anyway, so um, so Joseph, what's your big number two? Like crap. Oh dear. Okay. And who can forget our feline friends who have been very much part of the show for the last ten years? Uh, Some sadly no longer with us. Uh, Rest in peace, Argento. But uh, still very much in our hearts to get him in for the discussion of uh, Dario Gento. Um, oh, that would have been perfect for him. It would have been. He it would have been be here. perfect. Perfect. That's not even yeah. my joke of the week either. Don't. Scraps is here. She's been quiet, though. Good to see you. Uh, you need to get down, like right now. <laughs> Pardon? I'm talking to, the, talking to my cat. Okay. I thought you might have someone else there with you. Um... So, anything else we want to say about... Um, I want to say, the Hysteria Continuous is a sexist podcast. Why do you hate Eric so much, you cheap little hooker? You make me sick. <laughs> oh, Eric. When I was putting together the clips for this clip show, um, uh, we were asking uh, which uh, things people remembered from the last 10 years. Uh, one name kept on coming up, and that was Stefania Stella and Fatal Frames. That woman's frightening. She gives me the creeps. This is a weird situation. Even when she says something that makes no sense, she's actually trying to dig into you, to explore you. You should look at yourself with the same blind eyes and perhaps you will find something that you never knew about yourself. What are you trying to say? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> She sounds like the maid from Family uh, Guy. I need more lemon pledge. I just like well, the fact that she, she goes off on this diatribe and then he says, what do you mean? She goes, nothing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> how, old, nothing. how old do you think she was in this film? Um, I would say she was late See? 30s. Yeah, I think you're probably probably right. Because she could have been, I think when I, my review I wrote on this series, I thought that she could be anything between 30 and 90. I thought it's a bit like, <laughs> she kind of reminded me of, you know, seeing those photos of Jackie Stallone, um, you know, she's got, yes. um, she's had plastic surgery recently and she was out in a kind of split cut skirt with a leg out and she's in her 90s and she looked a little bit like Stefania Stella. Mm. Nobody's ever seen them in the same room. True. Yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah but, uh, um, you put a picture up on the History Lives, um, or History Continues Facebook of Stefania Stella and to me, she really reminded me of uh, Marge in Halloween 3 after she's had her face blasted off with the <laughs> silver shamrock <laughs> microchip. Oh, dear, yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. I mean, Joseph, what the hell? I mean, could you watch it again? Oh, yes. Um, I'll, do, I'll do Eric one better. I loved Fatal Frames. I think it's one of the most gloriously bad movies you'll ever watch. I don't care how long it is. I could, I could have watched it twice in a row. I'm serious. Mm. I'm not being ironic. I really did love it that much. I mean, Yay. it's so, it's so self indulgent. It's stylish, but I mean, it's so self indulgent and self important. And you know, Eric said everyone looks like a member of Color Me Bad. I think everyone looks like Fabio. I yes. Kept expect, yes. I kept expecting yeah. him to say, "I can't believe it's not bad," but they didn't. <laughs> but uh, yeah. no, and it, this is like Stefania Central, and this is a star vehicle for Stefania. Hmm. And I mean, you will see Stefania ninety nine percent of the movie, the, the the countless pop video interludes of her just kind of writhing around, and she has you know she has a really nice body for her you know, but she has like a face only her even a mother wouldn't love. Uh, <laughs> she, she's pretty, she's pretty hideous, but there's one scene I I, I, I laughed until I, I couldn't control myself. There's a like an expository scene where they're kind of a. You know, giving a lot of exposition about the plot, and then all of a sudden, while they're still talking, it cuts to a shot of her just sitting there, and there, people are photographing her. Hmm. And then later on, um, uh, someone calls her and gets her answering machine. He's like, "Oh, hi, Stefania. I just wanted to check in on you because uh, he might as well have said you're not on screen right now, so we need to <laughs> let everyone know that this is your film." Yeah, I and, love uh, her. I love her answering machine because whenever somebody rings it, she 
they get this message. This is this Stefania's is the ha- machine. answering machine. <laughs> answering machine, yes. And there's one scene where they zoom in on Stefania really quick, and she's like, I can't believe it. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I love I love the scene that you know when they go into the bar when when he meets um, yeah. Alex meets um, uh, Linear Quigley. Quigley, and he's saying to the the other guy, "Oh, you're a shit for putting me through this." And then out of nowhere, Stefania just appears <laughs> talking to him. But every time they do a sh- shot of her, they do it straight on, don't they? Mm. So yeah, it's like it's they, they focus right on her, her and her like heaving cleavage. Looking straight at the camera, and um, yeah. and then she goes and she says something. It's, she just appears like this kind of supernatural being. Just ping, there she is, teleported yeah. in, and then she goes. Well, there is Ciao. like that. There is something just... very not of this earth about Stefania Stella in general. I think. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And what's funny is that um, that is her real name. Her character's name is Stefania Stella, but she actually used her own name. Her real name mm. is Stefania mm. Stella. I mean, how how self indulgent can you be? Now, whilst we may have needed a drink for Fatal Frames, uh, we were relatively sober for that one, but not for our legendary, or should I say, perhaps infamous, drunk cast. So, uh, charge your glasses, because uh, this is a section of the show where we um, get a little tipsy. Sister Michael Myers, she decapitated the man. Why? Oh my God, she killed the wrong person. Why didn't paramedics say something? His larynx had been crushed. I would have preferred just to see him sewing his decapitated head back on. We're in. They picked all three of us. We're going to be bigger than the Osbournes. They're exploring the house of a mass murderer. Yeah, we decided to have a little drunk cast for a number of reasons, really. Um, it was uh, One is that because of our scheduling conflicts, we're actually recording this um, late into the evening over on the UK and Irish side. And um, uh, early evening on your side? Early, very early evening for them. They have no excuse to be drinking this early. It's no. five o'clock somewhere. Well, it's five o'clock somewhere. Right here. It's five o'clock here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, anyway, because we're, for, and the other reason we're drinking, of course, is we're covering um, um, Halloween Resurrection. Um, of course, when we, if we ever do get round to the next two Halloween films, we'll probably need something stronger, we like heroin no. or, or crystal meth or something. But <laughs> we will... Or sort of arsenic, maybe, I don't know. Um, but at the moment, uh, what is your poison of choice, uh, Nathan? What have you been drinking? I drank a couple of Moscow mules, and I am drinking a glass of wine. Oh, very at sophisticated. The That's very sophisticated. Red or white? Um, it's pink. Oh, rosé. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, actually, it's it's um, what we like to call over uh, in these parts cardboard dough, because it comes in a cardboard, cardboard. box. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, wow, that's, that's very classy. <laughs> Erica, are you yeah. enjoying? Uh, very classy. <laughs> you are. I wouldn't say unlikable or likable, kind of inconsequential, but they're not obnoxious. So I appreciated that. You know, they're basically fodder. That's all they are. They're here to get picked off by Michael Myers. And I think um, uh, Brad Laurie, who plays Michael Myers in this film, I think he does, you know, uh, one of the he's one of the better shapes in the in the series, in my opinion. Um, obviously not a candle to the first two, but, uh, you know, he's. He's bro- you know he's brooding and shadowy in the background. I think he's he pulls that off really well. Um, the one thing, yeah. I, the one the one scene, ha ha ha. The one scene uh-huh. I did I, I get I get a kick out of is not because it's how bad and cringe inducing it is with a Buster Rhymes you know talking to that mask like get your ass in the kitchen motherfucker you're not supposed to be in here. <laughs> But um, now, the, the, what I get a kick out of is like just just thinking that that Michael Myers, rather than kill this guy who's just so annoying, he probably just sits there and rolls his eyes like, "What am I doing here? Why why am I not killing this guy?" It's just so silly. Um, I don't know. It, it's a terrible terrible movie. Probably the nadir of the original Halloween you know uh, series. But at the same time, it's it's kind of enjoyable because it's just so bad. You know, even something like Halloween 6, which was... Uh, if you were here right now, I would throw my glass of cardboard dough on you. Oh, <laughs> put it in my mouth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> throw it in your mouth. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Justin, please, this is a family show. 
Just You're nothing and a doctor. There are the wine. I'm talking about show. the wine, for Christ's sake. Well, somebody think of the children. <laughs> <laughs> think of all the young children listening to this episode. Oh, God, this is the best episode ever. Yeah, happy fucking Halloween, Michael. Yeah, um, Nathan, Nathan, I think I better get to you before you pass out, so... Um, yeah, this movie is one of the biggest piles of shit I've ever seen in my life. What? Oh, I my goodness. This. Coming from I you. I hate this movie so much. I hate it. Like, it's like flames on the side of my face. Like, that's how much I hate wow, this thing. Wow, that's like poetry. My goodness. I hate it. God, I hate it so bad. Oh, this is an alternative reality. It, it, it is, is an torture. alternative reality. It's like I Stranger Things. You do not take an iconic character like Laurie Strode and treat her like she is some secondary character to be bumped off at the beginning of this film. That is the biggest sin I've ever heard of in a horror movie in my life. I'm so pissed off right now just thinking about it. I'm I'm just imagining uh, Nathan waving a Union Jack flag all the way through that. Uh, So here we go. (laughs) It is the, uh, well, Eric's intro to Demons 2. They split! Hold on, my synopsis about Demons 2. Oh, is, here we go. It's about a young, handsome young man who comes back from work and he goes home and he goes hunting for a piece of cake and he ends up gets trapped up a lift um, and he goes up and down the shaft a few times. <laughs> his, his, his shirt falls off and then he saves the day. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 Justin. I can't, I can't Justin, you missed a part. Tough. What part? The other part was once he got out of the lift, he made his way to my apartment. <laughs> that same okay. thing. But uh, I did have one thing to um, talk about Demons 2. I am having a hard time believing that Sally, uh, the actress who plays S- Sally Coralina, I'm having a very hard time believing that she was um, 15 years old during production of this movie because uh, I was doing a little research on her and she was apparently born in 1971. Um, and she was 15 years old when this film uh, was filming. And she, honestly, I don't think she looks, you know, elderly or anything, but she looks easily in her mid to late 20s. So I'm wondering if she's lying about her age. Um, but, well, maybe you know, just, she's yeah. wearing a lot of makeup. Yeah, well, maybe. could be, but. I have a theory. That, oh, oh, Eric's got a theory. Eric's got a theory. Okay. Theory. Maybe her date of birth goes back and forth. I told you, I told you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But, um... <laughs> uh, I'm muting, I'm muting. Go ahead, Joseph. I'm sorry. I want to fucking get drunk. Repeat after me. You don't fucking care. I don't fucking care. I don't need your shit. You don't need my shit? Fuck. Fuck. Cow! Fuck! Oh, fuck. Fuck you and fuck this. Die, you fucking bitch. You fucking bitch. So Nathan oh, wins. Your prize is another Nathonian. <laughs> hey, Wes says that you should all vote as to whether I get another wine. Should I have another wine or not? Yes. No, a, a Nathonian. A Nathonian. Justin, Justin, what's your vote? Well, I would say because you are the last bell, aren't you? I'd say you're the last bell... In Tennessee, so I think as of as the um, the bell end of the show, I think you should have another drink. They said I was the bell end of the show, <laughs> and that is the that you know what the bell end means. I don't know what a bell end it means. Your penis looks like a bell. <laughs> Eric, what's your vote? My vote is that Wes has the exact same voice as you because I thought that was you shouting. Um, you and I have the exact same voice. No, if you actually hung out with it, you would you would see yeah. the just difference between Wes's voice and okay. Nathan's. Joseph, what's your vote? What's my vote on what? Whether I should have another glass of wine or not for this show. Or we're going to lose our entire audience, so just go for it. Well, I'm pouring wine into a glass, and you know my straw is white and red sachet. 
Now, wait a minute. Justin, what is that? Like? Sometimes. Hey, Justin, have you ever been knighted by the Queen? <laughs> yes, um, twice now. I want to be knighted. Can I be? Do you think I could do it, or does it? Is it only for British people? I think it's only for British people. But if you if you change I, your nationality, I, I, I could be British. <laughs> I could talk like I'm from the British Isles. And I, I want the queen to knight me. I mean, is that is that a bad thing or is it is it disrespectful? Wait Justin? a minute, wait a minute, Justin. Didn't Sh- didn't Sean Connery get knighted? He's not British, is he? Yeah, he's Scottish. See? He's Scotland. Is he? It- See, I'm terrible with geography. I apologize, but I didn't know that was Justin. Can you put a good word in for me with the Queen and get me nodded? Yeah, well, next time I'm speaking to Liz on Skype or Zoom, I'll, I'll mention you. Because I think well, that you'd, you probably really? wouldn't, need, you really? wouldn't you, you wouldn't need a passport coming to England with that accent. They'd let you straight in. And then you'd have a... Have a I'm, you'd, I'm so touched. Well, you I know that. Put a good word yeah, in. We, we know you mean <laughs> yeah. Eric... Can you put me in a good word with the Queen of Ireland? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. The well, that's Queen Eric. That doesn't exist, but yeah. <laughs> we don't have a royal family in Ireland. Just me. Well, uh, who runs your your country? Uh, that would be the wizards, the leprechauns. Holy sh! Are you are you serious? The, are you are you just saying that because I'm? No, drunk? It, no. Or are you serious? Lepre- it's the leprechauns. Don't you know no, that? No, no. The leprechauns live, run no, Ireland. They live, exist, they live in a big shamrock house in Dublin and they run the country. But no, 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 no. You guys are so classy. How do you not know how classy you are? Well, I mean, I do, I do when know Justin I'm says, oh, the RuPaul contestant was a gaunt. He's so classy when he says that. <laughs> that RuPaul contestant was a what? A gaunt. Uh, it's C-U-N-T. I don't want to say <gasps> it again. I'd advise you not to sober up just yet because uh, we're going to close out the show with the voices of angels. Uh, yes, this is where we have more of the hysteria continues singing um, by popular demand. I, well, maybe one person asked for it, I'm not sure. But uh, yes, we're going to close out with our singing round from a quiz and also, of course, the hysteria misfires and the hysteria misfits or whatever we were called, I can't remember, um, plus the uh, the end of the show from the demons to drunk cast. So, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you ever so much to everyone who supported the show, who's guested on the show, who's donated to our Patreon, who's been with us from the beginning, uh, the messy, very quiet, very um, badly recorded beginning, to right up into the present day. So where, whoever you are and wherever you are, we love you a lot. And thank you for sticking with us through Thick and Thin. And I just wanted to say an extra special thank you to my co-hosts, uh, Nathan, Joseph, and Eric. Uh, we may rag on each other sometimes, but uh, we, uh, we've we been friends for a long time now, going back over 20 years. Uh, and um, we uh, we enjoy recording the podcast. And I know the people listening are saying that uh, the people that enjoy it out there, that it's like four friends talking about films that they love. And that couldn't sum it up better. So uh, thank you. An extra special thank you to Joseph for taking on the editing duties of the show, although I did this one all by myself, which you can probably uh, guess by the sound quality. Um, But yeah, thanks to uh, three of my best friends in the world. And uh, thank you so much. And um, hopefully there'll be much more to come from The Hysteria Continues. And again, we couldn't do it without you. So um, as I'm the only person here to say it, I'm going to say goodbye to the good people. And if you want to stop listening now, please do. But otherwise, stick around for some, as I said, voices of angels. Now, this is called The Singing Round. I'm going to give you a song. And you don't have to know the whole song, but you have to sing at least a little bit of it. Joseph, you have to sing a little bit of Foosball from Nailgun Massacre. We're living in the Bible Belt, whoa, and giving them hell. <laughs> Correct. Uh, okay, um, Eric, door number one or door number three? One, please. Okay, you have to sing a little bit of Fall Break from the Mutilator. Oh, I don't know how it goes. Fall break, ooh, we're going on a fall break, ooh, I hope my head doesn't get chopped off, ooh, <laughs> baby, baby, yeah, ooh. I would like to give you a point for that, but I'm afraid I can't. Oh. Well, uh, I'll hear Justin sing anyway. Yeah, Justin, can you sing a little bit of fall break? I can't remember how it goes, apart from, I, I'm sure it goes, we're going on a fall break, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what I just sang. I know. <laughs> but I'm sure that's how it goes, isn't it? 
I just don't think that has the right tune, and I don't think there's a woohoo in there. Oh. <laughs> it was worth a try. There's usually a wahoo in songs. Yes. Can you sing it, Joseph? Unfortunately, I don't think I can, so I'm just going to guess. Um, we're going on a fall break. <laughs> without, without the, oh, I, cannot, I can't give it to you off of we're going on a fall break. It's not enough, I'm afraid. I threw in a woohoo. But that woohoo's not in the song. Well, then I don't know. Okay, well, unfortunately, no points for that round. Well, for that question. We still got Justin's. Okay, Justin, mm. you automatically get door number three. And that means you have to sing a little bit of Annie's song about Paul from Halloween. That's so easy. I'm sorry. You guessed the door, Eric. <laughs> Is it sort of, Paul, forgot my keys, Louise, something like that, isn't it? <laughs> I'm afraid not. No, not I thought it, it was. Said. Doesn't she sing that about? Doesn't she say, "Oh, keys, Louise, something like that"? Isn't it? Well, she does she mention says, keys, but she doesn't mention exactly Louise. Yeah, yeah there's no Louise. Yeah. I think there was. She's under her breath. Oh, okay. No, they're not okay. Oh, I mean, no, I'm, 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 that's not enough to win. Get the point oh, for the question. No, I'm afraid. Okay. So, I mean, it goes to Eric. So, or wait a minute. Have I got the? Let's see. I had it as uh, Justin, then Joseph, then Eric. So I guess it goes to Joseph, actually. She's singing it to Paul. I don't remember. Okay, Eric, if it's easy, then. Yep. Oh, Paul, I give you all. No keys, but please, my Paul, hear me call. Is that enough? That's enough. Thank you. That is it.
right. All right. Yes. That's some next level shit right there. That's some next level shit right there. Okay, Nathan, you can take your earmuffs off now. Okay, oh. okay, good. Thank you, oh, Justin. Okay. Well, that was that was wow. a, that was. A I l- want to have sex with both of those guys. They're so <laughs> awesome. That was that was. You, I think it's not the winning that counts; it's the taking part. So, thank you, uh, Eric and Joseph. Eric, hey, Joey Sleeze. Guys. Is that the right? Is that the right way around, Joseph? It's Joey Sleeze and Eric Lust. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, Nathan, have we got names? Um, Gothy Gotherson mm. and Rhubarb Lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Nathan, National Treasure. And, and Justin, um, Wonderful Goodness. Justin Wonderful oh, those Goodness. Are, those <laughs> are rock stars. My yes, those are rock star names. Hey, yeah, are we stars. are above rock. You know, we are taking it into a transcendence with our, you know, harmony. Exactly. How about, was it Nathan? What is Nathan? Gnarly Nathan. Gnarly Nathan go. and just a little bit more. How about that? <laughs> so. Just a little bit less, please. <laughs> right uh, gentlemen gentlemen yes. yeah i'm very sorry to interrupt mm. i apologize profusely but mm. i have got to go to the restroom I'm oh very for sorry. goodness sake oh for well God. i'm Normally, sorry but what do you want me to do well well okay you do go you poo on your pants i ain't doing that i've drank some beer and it goes right through you you know what it does yeah, you see I normally do. normally this is a peek behind the scenes the soiled curtains of the hysteria continues it just, no, yes. it's just you normally, guys always have to take a bathroom break and i never do no no, no that's I'm fine that's fine one. nathan you take a bathroom just break did, but we're yeah. not gonna finish <laughs> recording just just go did. party yeah God, uh, well, damn in just a second Okay. So talk Justin about just said, yourselves, please. I can't even get a word in edgewise. Justin just said normally. He didn't say normally. He said normally. Well, that's said normally. The vodka martini speaking. To sit down, get yourself a little glass of wine if you're not already drinking. Maybe run yourself a bath. Lie it's a good in thing there. I'm drunk already. And <laughs> and just get ready for like imagine someone making love to your ears, as it were. Ew. On the streets of London Panic on the streets of Birmingham I wonder to myself Could life ever be sane again On the lead side streets that you slip down I wonder to myself Hopes may rise on the grass mirrors But honey pie, you're not safe as you run down to the safety of the town But there's panic on the streets of Carlisle Dublin, Dundee, Humberside I wonder to myself Instrumental 15 seconds Instrumental 15 seconds <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this will be brilliant That's going to be amazing Burn down the disco Hang the blessed DJ Because the music that they constantly play Says nothing to me about my life Hang the blessed DJ Because the music that they constantly play On the lead side streets that you slip down the provincial towns that you jog around Hang the DJ, hang the DJ, hang the DJ Hang the DJ, hang the DJ, hang the DJ Hang the DJ, hang the DJ Hang the DJ, hang the DJ Hang the DJ, hang the DJ, hang the DJ Hang the DJ, hang the DJ Hang the DJ, hang the DJ Hang the DJ, hang the DJ, hang the DJ Hang the DJ, hang the DJ Look, I'm going to be honest, that was actually really brilliant I applaud you, sirs Oh, thank you, Joseph. You're very honest. There may have been just a little quit, bit of auto just tuning don't quit going day, on. Just don't quit your day jobs, please. Yeah. <laughs> hey? 
其实我诶。Hey, what? What? All right, darling. Hey, what? 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 Hey, So, thank you for listening to the history. His or oh, what's it called? <laughs> the hysteria continues. Area continues. Yeah, uh, drunk cast, and uh, we will be back with more Italian nonsense at some point in the future. Oh, oh Nathan, do you guys, want to tell us what you're picking? Next? Yeah, my next pick is going to be Evils of the Night, and I promise you guys are going to love this movie. It's so good. There's yeah. one girl yeah. whose hair is insane, Eric. Oh, does it go back and forth? It's yes, it's like total eighties insane. She must have used a ton of Aquanet. I cool. do love Evils of the Night because it's so fucking shit, isn't it? It's it's amazing. <laughs> Justin, how dare you? I love you. that. So, so fucking shit. That's that's hilarious. But it is amazing, isn't it? Because it's got like uh, Julie Newmar, and it's got all these kind of they, Tina uh, Louise. John Carradine, or it's John Carradine. It's all these people in it, and yeah. then they've got these gym bunnies, or not gym bunnies, like disco bunnies on the beach with their Aquanet hairdos, and then being drilled to death by aliens <laughs> who want to suck their blood. I, it's amazing. <laughs> I don't want to go into too much detail about that movie since we're going to have to cover it, but uh, that movie really did piss me off because I saw the box art and it's the, the couple in the water, and I thought it was like a slasher film, but it was like totally not. Um, yeah. yeah, that's why I picked it for Patreon. Oh my god, it was like totally not. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, anyway, enough that's from Dublin's water. next top model. Um, <laughs> okay, so anyway, thank you for listening to this drunk cast. Um, yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, I love all you listeners. I think you're all awesome. I, I hope everyone got their money's worth for pledging for yeah. this. Honestly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you guys are really awesome too, FYI. Uh, I know, so if you if you if you guys will get us to a million dollars within the next six months, we'll um, we'll do every episode drunk. Do you know? And we'll also yeah, I'm, I'm just going to say, you know, when you having a party and you've and got we'll a couple of people who are who are a little bit drunk, of, and you're trying to kick them out of the house, and they won't shut up, and you're trying, you're pushing them out the door. Anyway, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best way to end the show, Justin. Thank yeah. you. Say so goodbye to good people. Goodbye, good people. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. I don't want the demons to get me. All my sleeves go back and forth. Eric's sleeves are going back and forth. Oh, no. I'm not wearing any sleeves. Little pink one. This is just off to an interesting start from the beginning. Yeah, it is. Oh. Only- Nathan, you're sounding like a, a slurring posh uh, English lady. <laughs> I'm quite a lush, I must admit. Do you think I've rubbed off on you? Yeah, you totally rubbed off on me. <laughs> Hair's not a bad thing. I'm a little hair. Hairy. <laughs> you're a fucking pothead, Nathan. Yeah. No, I prefer the term stoner. Do you ever look at the news and say something like, oh, God, look at her hair? Hey, Justin, would you ever say the P word out loud, let alone write it down? Thank you, John Merrick. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, for that American accent. Yeah, Justin, are you John recording? Eric. You still recording? I think I think we should keep doing this until we're like septuagenarians. I know Justin already is, but <laughs> I'm good. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> You guys, the ending to that movie is so infuriating. Oh, yes. really? Tell us about it. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so, it makes me so mad. Eric, you feel me on this, don't you? Yeah, no, Eric, that'll be our leaked sex tape. Oh, oh, my God. Stop. Oh, hey, Eric, what is that behind you that says uncut? Oh, oh my God. It's Who would that be, What the fuck is that? Ha, 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 ha,
Eric showed his butt, by the way, just a minute ago. Y'all didn't notice. 